Okay, so in memory databases are great for automated testing. Um, typically, your Django test suite uh, is going to involve a lot of operations, often leave repeatedly clearing and reinitializing the whole database to make time. Um, but at the same time, the amount of data is usually relatively small, at least compared to your production setup. So you don't need that much storage. It's usually small enough to fit in memory. Uh, and we don't really care about data persistence past the amount of time it takes to run the test, so having it in volatile memory is fine. We don't have any data loss um, concerns while we're testing. Uh, so it's great to keep this all in memory. It's fast, and it saves wear and tear on the hard disk. So here is probably the first in-memory database Django test scenario you've seen. Um, use the SQLite backend. And then the name, it just memory with columns on either side. And that'll just create an in-memory <coughs> database without any further configuration. Um, and if this works for you, great. If you're just using the ORM exclusively and not doing anything fancy, that might be fine. Um, but there is a problem, uh, potentially at least. You're probably not using SQLite in production. Um, at least for most applications, I really hope you're not using SQLite in production. <laughs> Um, and if you're testing against SQLite, this will cause problems. Um, if you're ever dropping into raw SQL that involves things specific to your engine, um, if your project relies on specific behaviors of field types that differ, like you know, text fields can differ from one engine to the next, particularly when it comes to defaults and things like that. Um, or if you just generally want to make sure your test environment matches production as closely as possible, which is a good way to uh, catch errors because before they become major pains. Um, of course, most engines you are going to use in production were not made to run in memory. This is kind of the opposite of use case database engines were made for. Um, if you've got a database backend, it's probably because your data set is too big to fit into memory. Um, and you also likely highly value data persistence and integrity very highly and don't want to just throw that in volatile memory and hope you don't have a power outage. Um, some engines do provide limited support for in-memory tables, um, but that requires a lot of extra stuff. It varies from one engine to the next, and it's just kind of a lot of work to have something that's kind of still not quite what you really want. So here's where Docker comes into the equation. Um, and I realize it may seem anathema to use Docker and database in the same sentence. Um, but the primary reason for that is data persistence. Docker containers are ephemeral. You wouldn't ever want to run a production database inside a Docker container. Um, but we don't, again, for the same reasons we want to do in memory, it doesn't matter for testing. As long as it's persistent enough to hold your, your data through the end of the tests, you know, or maybe a bit after if you want to keep them around and like inspect things manually, that's, that's fine. Um, you know, that, the main, the main uh, consideration with Docker doesn't really apply to the testing scenario. So the key here is tempfs, which is essentially a RAM disk you can mount in a Linux, possibly other Linux uh, file system. At any point in the file system, you set that up, and to all your other programs, it just looks and acts like any other directory. They don't know it's tempfs versus ext or whatever else. Um, so when you're setting up your Docker container, you set up a database engine, and then you find out where your database is going to be right into disk, which is probably going to be var live and then your database engine. And the engine basically doesn't know that that's a RAM disk. It's just part of the file system where it's used to working with stuff. And the nice thing about that is that there's no special configuration required at the engine level. So here's the Docker Compose. And yeah, if you want to take photos, this is going to be really the only slide you need. This is, this is a crucial thing. Um, and again, you, know, you probably don't even need to use Docker Compose. I'm sure this can all be done with command line arguments to just to Docker. Um, but I find the uh, Compose to be convenient and you know, I don't do remember all the command line things. Um, so, you know, just going through these quickly line by line here, the, this example is Postgres 12. Um, you know, environment, you do want to set your password so you can get into it. Uh, the ports, 
may not be strictly be needed, but probably if you're running this on a local workstation, you probably have you know a non-volatile uh, database instance running on the standard port. Um, so by using a non-standard port in the Docker container, that allows you to keep your you know real or at least real for a development um, engine up on the right port and not have this interfere with it. And then the uh, that line, the last uh, two lines there, that's really the key. TempFS and mount it to the place in the file system where uh, your uh, database engine is going to be writing to disk. And we don't need a Docker file with this. You know, this is just image, there's no build. Um, because just like the standard vanilla Docker container is gonna be fine. And as far as the Django setup goes, it depends on you know, how you, you set up things, but if you're pulling your credentials from you know, environment variables, which is quite common, you really don't need to change your database's definition in your settings file. You just change the environment variables to point the right host, the right port, whatever credentials, um, and you don't even really, you know, often cases need a separate database's definition on Django. Uh, the other nice thing about this is that it is not specific to Django or Postgres. Um, it'll work for any database that runs in a container, and therefore it'll work for any application that wants a database that can run in a container. You just point it um, at your uh, Docker container. So, uh, last slide, just in summary, uh, our ideal situation for testing is to have an in-memory database which uses the same database engine that is being used in production. Um, Docker is a very quick way to set up most major database engines running totally in memory, uh, and this works anytime you want to test against a containerizable database engine, uh, including Django and Postgres as well. That's it. I don't know if we've got uh, questions for. <laughs> Thank uh -huh.